Hey YouTubers, I'm back with uh, video number two in my series of videos about replacing the HID projectors in my headlights. I got my uh, projectors in from uh, headlightsquick.com. Got the uh, Mini H1 projectors in here and we are going to be modifying these to work in my aftermarket headlights and there's going to be some pretty heavy modifications done but uh, if you're if you're familiar with a Dremel tool and a file and some other simple tools I know you can handle it and I'll guide you through everything I'm doing so uh, we'll talk about the uh, existing mounts first and what I had to do to those to adapt them to work and then we'll move on to what you need to do to the projectors to make them work as well okay what we have here are the two old projectors that I ended up modifying um, to reuse those so there is one of the old here are the two um, old projectors that were used to be a part of this system I cut them off right here and uh, we're going to be using this flange to remount the new headlights so what I ended up doing was taking, taking a Dremel tool this is the front side so you can see the comparison with the front to the back what I ended up doing was taking a Dremel tool and cutting the reflector all the way around the outside of this and then using a file and the Dremel tool to drill it nice and flat and uh, this is one I haven't drilled the holes in yet for mounting the new projector but as you can see they've both been modified and what we need are these holes right here to mount the new projectors to since these um, projectors had the adjustment built into the projector we still need this flange to mount our new projectors to um, and we had to modify those to continue to use them so that's where we're at there and I will show you how the uh, projector is going to mount to those flanges. Okay, here's how they're going to mount. As you can see on the projector itself, the word top is there. So we have to remember to keep the orientation of the projector correct when we mount those to our, to our homemade flanges. So what this is, what's going to happen is this flange is going to mount right to here. And there are four screw holes. One here one here one here and one right here and those screw holes are actually what hold the projector lens to the projector and we're going to put some longer bolts in there to uh, refasten that um, projector lens to this projector going through this mounting flange that we've made okay the first step in this process is going to make you some longer screws. Uh, the screws that the bulbs come with are these little bitty short um, 8 by 32 metric um, uh, screws that hold the projector to the reflector. So we need some longer ones to go through our mounts. So the first thing to do is take these, take some metric screws, 8 by 32, uh, grind the head down so it will fit um, right here so it will go through that hole and won't uh, inter interfere with the projector itself so uh, chuck the screw up in a, in a drill gently chuck it up and put it on your grinder and spin the screw while you're grinding it down to make the head smaller then take your Dremel tool and cut you a groove in the top of the um, screw so you can put a screwdriver on there one thing I failed to mention on the flange is line up your flange with the four holes that are used to mount the projector lens to the reflector and mark you four holes in four locations um, and then we're going to drill this flange. I had to do this a couple of times to get it to mount just right but if you have a Dremel you can do it as, just like I did. Uh, Mark and drill that hole, that hole, that hole, and that hole. And those holes correspond with the four mounting holes that hold the projector lens uh, to the projector. The next process is we're going to have to modify the reflector to uh, 
accommodate the adjustment screws that hold the uh, whole apparatus into the reflector. So what we're going to have to do is the areas that are marked in black right here are the areas that are going to have to be trimmed out. And the way you mark this is you take your uh, beam adjuster for your high beam solenoid, you lay that over the top of the reflector in its proper orientation and mark the projector with a sharpie or some other uh, pen and we're going to cut off the four areas that are marked in black there up here down here and the same thing on both sides that area interferes with the adjuster um, when it mounts into the headlight assembly so the next thing i'm going to do is trim those off all right now that you've got that trimmed here is what your finished projector will look like you have reliefs cut at all four corners for the adjustment hold downs um, when we mount it back on the assembly. And uh, next I'll show you how to bolt it all together and uh, what it looks like all assembled. All right, here's what you end up with. Once you do all those modifications and you get all your screws back in it, you get your um, activation solenoid harness back in there, you're, what you end up with is this, you have your um, modified reflector with your uh, lens on the front and you have four screws sticking out. One of them I had to cut off a little bit short. We're gonna end up cutting them off anyway because uh, I messed up the threads on the end of it. But uh, here's what you end up with is four studs sticking out the back and that's what we're gonna use to mount our flange, uh, one of these flanges to with some nuts on the back side. And that's what we're going to use to mount the headlight with. One note I would add at this point here is um, these flanges, once you get them made, there is a front and a back. Um, one's the rear. This is the rear where it says sonar up at the top. Um, that is the rear. The other, other side, you can see some remnants of the where the projector used to be right here. You can see some remnants of that. And those need to be facing the correct direction. So um, this is the front, this is the back, the say front of the vehicle, as in this is the way the light through came out was this way, and this faces the back of the headlight. So when you put them on your projectors, they need to be in that correct orientation. Okay, here is what you end up with. You end up with the Morimoto or the uh, Tech Xenon Mini H1 adapted to fit the old headlight flange with the adjustment um, plastic keepers and we can see that our adjustment holes are clear and we've we've I've put a nut on the back side um, put the screw through it that we've made put the whole screw through the hole in the flange and put a nut on the back side um, so we can uh, use that for the uh, existing mount and then we'll mount that in the um, headlight and the same way it used to be with the same adjustment hardware. Okay, here we are with the projector mounted in the headlight backing. And you can see what we've done here. There's our um, adjustment, headlight aiming adjustment um, connection and how we've used that flange that we built to mount the headlight to. And this headlight flange is mounted in three places. Um, two on the bottom, one here, same place on the back side, one there, and then a point of pivot, which is right here. Now, I added this screw in top of there um, because I felt that was a little bit loose and I didn't want that popping out. So I took a screw, a wood screw, cut it off and screwed it down in there just to tighten that up a little bit. Um, this setup seems to be a little bit heavier than the one that was in here and I was concerned about that um, coming out of there. So it's not necessary. Um, I just wanted a little extra insurance on there. So um, now I will, we'll see how it fits with the um, chrome part of the headlight. Now this kit came with the uh, Gatlin gun, uh, 
um, uh, covers and since this headlight has the aftermarket chrome insert I won't be using these so if you need some let me know uh, I'll send them to you for free um, anyway so I'll get the chrome part of the headlight back in it and we'll see how it looks with this black ring with the chrome insert. All right, here we go with the uh, projector back in the headlight assembly. I just went ahead and reassembled the headlight. Um, I have yet to bake it yet. So the next step is to put the headlight back in the oven and bake it to um, soften the sealer. So when you put the headlight back together, everything seals up nicely. Um, but that's what it looks like when it's inside looks really nice See you can see that there's no reason for the Gatlin gun um, Ring on the outside of it. It doesn't need it because it's got its own ring. So um, I'll be back to uh, I'll Be back with you once I get the headlight baked and get the case all closed up Okay, so now the uh, next step in this whole process um, you rebake the headlights put the headlights back together, reassemble them, and then we'll start the wiring process. So the wiring process, if, I don't know if you're like me, but uh, here's my headlight all reassembled and I'm starting the wiring process again. I don't know if you're like me, but uh, um, I want my high beams to, I want my low beams to stay on. And if you're a Dodge truck guy, you know what I'm talking about. Um, when you're, when you put one of these aftermarket kits in and you turn the high beams on, the low beams go off. And uh, I don't know if you're like me, but I want the high beams on as well as the low beams to come on. So I have all four headlights on at the same time. Well, Morimoto happens to make a uh, wiring harness that does that very thing. So I'm going to be installing that and I'll show you guys how I'm, what I'm doing. Um, so here's the starting of that of that wiring this this goes to the high beam headlights and this wiring harness consists of two separate harnesses um, this one here this plug here goes to the ballast for the HIDs for the low beam and then you have another plug coming off of that same harness right here that goes to the high beams so it keeps your low beams on while you're when you turn the high beams on so you have all four headlights so the first part of that process is to wire in this plug that uh, supplies power to the high beams. And at the same time, uh, when the high beams come on, I want the uh, shade to flop down on the low beams so that I have the high beam headlights on and the shade flop down and the high beams on and the projectors. So what I did here was wired the projector solenoid in with the high beam connection so now when the high beams come on it will flip down the uh, solenoid and flip down the shade in the low beams so um, as I get further along I will show you how that's going to be wired up okay guys uh, here's an update on my wiring I wanted to show you guys how I wired everything so here we have our Morimoto high beam, low beam cancellation, well, not cancellation, um, add-on where you have high beams and low beams together. Um, here is my ballast, this is where I mounted it. And we have our high beam connection here. We have our uh, connection for the HID here, the marker lamp connection, which I have some splices in for the other LED lights and the headlights and turn signal so um, cancel resistors are here um, ignore all this this is wiring for my air horns i've got it's not part of the headlights so canceling resistors here so the headlights stay on ballast um high beam um, i don't even know what you call this thing um, high beam double high beams and then i've got the headlight in on this side um, so um, this side's a lot more simple. I'm choosing not to show you that, but it's a lot more simple. Here is the back of my headlight uh, before I put it in. Um, high beam connection here. Oh, stay. stay. Um, ballast for the uh, angel eyes where I've got the wiring all um, uh, glued up in place so it just stays in, in place. I just use hot glue for that. 
um, hot glued the ballast in instead of screwed it in. That way there's less holes in the case. Um, HID connections here. So uh, we're ready to put this baby back together. And the next thing I'll show you is what the light pattern looks like after I figured out how to aim them. So that'll be next. All right, peeps, I told you that I would show you what they were like when they're turned on. Well, here they are. They're turned on, installed, and working properly. And that is just the low beam. Um, I'll show you what the high beams look like too. Uh, looks pretty good, really happy with it. Um, the pattern is really good tonight. I will get it out on the road and I'll show you what the pattern looks like on the road. But um, on the, uh, on my whiteboard, I'm using kind of as a, it's kind of small, but on my whiteboard, looking pretty good. So uh, I'll show you what the high beams look like. And there's the high beams. All four lights on, um, fog lights as well. Oops, sorry about that. And uh, all four lights working, and that ought to turn night into day in front of me out. And I'm out on the road. I can't wait to see it. Um, Really looks good. I'm super happy with it. And I'll show you what the pattern is on the road um, tonight when it gets dark. Okay, here is the final product. I told you guys I would uh, show you what the pattern was once I got the headlights in and got them aimed. And uh, here's what it looks like. Pretty good, pretty darn happy with it. That's low beams, that's high beams. Back to low beams. Sorry for the shaky video. Pretty rough road I'm on, but um, that's kind of what it looks like. Pretty darn happy with it. Like the cutoff, nice sharp cutoff, and a nice step. Um, set the adjustment in the driveway about 25 feet from the garage door. Um, set them equal distance apart. The steps same distance as the headlights apart when you do that it uh, makes it exactly right almost dead lines up when you uh, get out on the road uh, gives you a nice pretty nice hot spot right in the middle it's not you can't really see it on the phone the phone doesn't do it justice but uh, take you out on the dark road here and show you what it looks like that's low beam that's high beam there Couldn't be happier. Back to low beam. Take you out on the road here and show you the back roads here in Oklahoma. That's low beam there. It's high beam. Like I said, the phone doesn't do it justice. It looks a lot better than looks a lot better than that in person. So, that's what it looks like. I hope you guys can tell by that by the video. Well, that pretty much wraps up my headlight project. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching the video. Um, I know it's been a long couple of videos, but there was a lot of information there, and I took you pretty much step by step through what I did. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you know anybody else that's got these headlights that are unhappy with them, uh, feel free to tell them about the video and let them watch it. And uh, hopefully we can work something out where uh, if you guys need help, feel free to post down below in the comments section. Um, be happy to answer any questions you guys might have or comments or welcome comments. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, open to everything. If you guys have better ideas or you've done something different, feel free to let me know about it. Um, if anybody, like I said, if anybody has questions, post them here and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, go visit headlightsquick.com. Um, go get your stuff there. The guys there are great. They'll help you every step of the way. They've got everything you need to fix you up. Everything I got, I got from there. Um, those guys are awesome down there, and uh, they'll give you all the help you need. Um, so I can't plug them enough. Uh, they've been a tremendous help in this project for me. So um, anyway, uh, I guess that's all I've got for now, and uh, maybe I'll talk to you guys soon when I get my next project going. I have no idea what that will be. But uh, I'll get another project going and uh, post something else about that. So for now, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.